The girl lay unmoving in a shallow basin not two leagues from my home. Delena, one of my wards. She'd been overdue returning from her patrol route. I crouched quietly beside a large granite boulder, and in the light of pre-dawn, waited and watched. For several moments, I scanned the barren horizon of the scarred lands, thinking I might catch sight of the killer. Only the settled silence of the scar returned to me, and I was reminded again that scars and silence were the bedfellows of my exile here. Taking care, I moved into the bottoms where ages ago there'd been a river, but the scar hadn't known real water or greenery since the Battle of the Round, which had torn vibrance from these lands. I slowed as I approached her, not needing to kneel to see the cause of her death. Red lines tracked up her wrists. Precise cuts made lengthwise into her veins, a bloodletting technique I teach all my wards. It allows the blood to flow so much faster. It was then I noticed something she clutched in her hand. I bent and gently took the bit of parchment. I unrolled it and read the note in the dead silence and pre-dawn light of the scar. Forgive me, Grant. I'm not as strong as the others. I'm not as strong as you. Fourteen years I have lived in this place. Fourteen years I have hoped someone would come and claim me. Well, I'm tired of hoping. I'm tired of the hopelessness. I'm tired of the scar. Tell the others that I love them. Thank you for watching over me as you have, even in your own suffering. I stared at the words, reading and rereading until I knew I would forever remember them precisely as they were. I wanted never to forget the ache I felt in my heart at that moment. Then I took the knife she'd taken care to wipe clean and sheath after her self-destruction, and I began to tear at the hard soil of the basin, digging her a barrow in which to rest. When the task was done, I turned south and east, running now to keep my appointment. Racing across the desolate landscape, I worked out the frustration of another child gone to her earth by her own hand. Delena hadn't been the first. In a few days' time, I came to the dead, sun-bleached tree, which rose off the plain like a warning. The sun crested the horizon to the east as I heard the mewling of an infant. I had come again, at the closing of another cycle of the lesser light, to the forgotten cradle. And again, it bore its fruit. Into the hollow of the tree just above my head I reached. Gently, I picked up the infant left there and brought her out. Every cycle, Another child, another ward, part of my sentence. I knew when I saw the babe that she'd have to remain in the scar with me and the others for whom I'd been unable to find a family. The infant had a deformity of the lips. No other would take her. And as the child cooed into the silence, the thought occurred to me that the number of us here in this dire place remained the same. A life taken, another added. With that thought, I began my walk home.